take two tracks and call us in the morning. It's the Spin Doctors. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to the show. A big welcome to you all. When where does the word welcome come from? I believe I believe it comes from the the old innkeeper when uh, they would answer the door on a rainy mm, mid morning, maybe a late evening, you know, maybe dusk. I'm not sure if dusk has a specific time. Um, it's just one of those things like uh, high noon, which you think is just at noon. But what's the difference between high noon and regular noon? Is it like 1230? I don't know. Maybe it's, it's just it's I think it's where the sun is the tallest. Anyway, I digress. Uh, I believe that the in innkeeper, when uh, they would open the door upon this rainy day uh, to to uh, a, 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 a sorry soul begging for begging for comfort, they would go, well, come on in. And then they would come in, and they would they would take their shoes off, hopefully, uh, to not get mud all over the inn. Um, you want to keep the mud out, not in the inn. They have a, a sign that says that hung up on the wall. <laughs> it's quite quaint and beautiful. Um, but I would like to welcome on in you all to the show today, uh, which I hope can be, much like an inn, a respite for your weary soul. While you travel through the cosmos... In your skeleton that is coated in meat. And just remember, we are all space stuff. This isn't the 420 episode, but you would think that it was. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Welcome to the Spin Doctors. I am your host, Rick Storer. I am having a I am I'm so tired today. <laughs> but I am I'm here and I'm 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 so ready to get down and have a good fun time with my co-host, my good friend Nick Malizia. I clean the rooms at the inn. <laughs> <laughs> you would make I, a good like bellboy, like yeah. Oh, I'd be a great bellboy, and I will go through your shit when you're not looking. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> um, yeah, I, a little I feel bit like of a kleptomaniac when I see shiny things. Yeah, a little bit. You're like a crow. Mm -hmm. Oh, you would be like in the animal version of your life. You would be a crow. I think a, a crow would play you. That's. Interesting to say. I don't like crows, specifically crows, but birds all in general, not a big fan. So uh, I've What's had a bad with run in with birds all my They hate me. I don't have a good relationship with birds. <laughs> I hate them all. As a child, I was swooped on by a, by an owl. What? I was like near its nest or something. And this was like when I was like a like two years old. And my mom, like I was out playing in the yard. My mom looked, this owl swooping at me and then started picking up rocks and dropping them on me. What the And so the she fuck? ran out, picked me up, got out. That was that. Fast forward to like An owl 10. was like waging, like he was bombing you? You were being bombed yep. by an owl? Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Very much so. And then fast forward to 10 years old. I'm visiting California for my first time on the beach. First time seeing the beautiful ocean, the beach. Oh, yeah. It's amazing. Ooh. And then I just got fucking swooped on by a gang of seagulls <laughs> all just like went, went at yeah. me, just pecking at my feet. I was doing nothing. Seagulls are the most like don't give a fuck bird in oh, California. Oh, 100%. And I hate them. I hate. I, I love it when I see a dead one. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to get a little dark. Okay. It brings me joy. <laughs> It You're brings like, me good. joy. You deserve it's, this. Yes, it's one less demon on this earth to worry about. And then I was attacked by crows at about age twelve uh, in Colorado. What walking. is your life? <laughs> I know birds, man. I don't trust them, <laughs> but specifically the crows. I've always had a crow following me. I always is notice your dad it. I respect Alfred crows. Hitchcock. <laughs> it makes sense. <laughs> um, but, uh, because I'm, 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 I'm so morose about things. I don't know why that, I felt like <laughs> that was Hitchcock. you look a lot like him, He just too. seems so... You're... <laughs> <laughs> you got the same profile. People just see my silhouette. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think it's weird that people think that being shit on by a bird is good luck. Nope, that's not real. Mm-mm. That's the thing that people say. They say, like, if you're walking around and a bird shits on you, that's good luck. I think we need to hear another take on this, because I say no. <laughs> you say but, no, okay. Uh, well, I say yes, you say no. We gotta have somebody to break this this uh, tie. So, uh, let's let's go ahead and bring on this week's guest, uh, who is my good, good, good friend. He is a, a very sweet boy. Um, that's not true at all. He's a fucking monster. Uh, he is a local comedian, uh, a, a degenerate, 
and an all-around fun, fun man. It's Corey Jernigan. Hey, <laughs> thank you for having me on. Hi, Corey. You know, actually, and military I've, personnel. I have been looking forward to this podcast since <laughs> Rick told me he didn't want to have a podcast with me. Yeah. And... Uh, I had pitched during the pandemic. I was like, Hey Rick, you want to make a podcast? He's like, no, because then you have to depend on somebody else. And then two weeks later, he's like, Hey, so I have a new podcast coming out with Nick Melizia. And I was like, Oh, thanks man. Appreciate that. Um, but, but, uh, in all fairness, I don't have to depend on Nick for shit. <laughs> I was going to say the same thing, man. I just show up when I'm told to, man. <laughs> but no, uh, seriously speaking, is uh, I look up to both of you uh, comedically 100%. Uh, uh, Nick was actually on my very first paid show. Uh, he featured on it. and That was uh, a cool show, man. Yeah, yeah. Cuban I forget that was your first show, huh? Yeah, and uh, Rick, you're always a treasure to watch. I think I was on guys... that show, too. No, you yeah. weren't. <laughs> well, you guys are you guys are two comedians that when you guys go on stage, I always make it a point to go watch you like from the front row. You guys are fucking hilarious, and you guys have done oh, a lot right for on. me personally with comedy. But getting shit on by a bird is definitely a day ruiner, not a good luck charm. All right, you've now earned your fifty dollars that I promised you for sucking my dick. <laughs> turned just, the intro. Just think about it, like. Like, if you're walking down the street and you get shit on by a bird, do you uh -huh. think to yourself, oh, I'm going to have a great day today? No. no you think, mm, this no. is a shitty fucking day. Yeah, I wish it were great. I'm going to go day drink now. Yes. Uh, getting shit on by a bird is like getting struck by a thunderbolt from Zeus. Except, <laughs> do you get magic sticky powers? And stinky. Superpowers? I feel like you get superpowers from Zeus's lightning. <laughs> I think you've watched Powder too many times. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> Powder is, is a, a movie stars show? about a, oh, that a, movie? a bald okay. albino man who can feel the pain of others because he's struck by lightning. Really? That's a real movie? Yes, sir. It is. I guess you Damn. haven't watched it too many times. I guess you're just wow. naturally powdery. <laughs> Who's in it? Uh, Powder. Jesus. Actors, bitch. <laughs> I don't remember. I saw it when I was like... Ooh, I, I was, Jeff I was, Goldblum is in it. Uh, okay, Sean Patrick that, Flannery, uh, yeah. Mary Steenburgen. Oh, comes off with that on Wikipedia. Mary Steenburgen. Lo love Mary. Lance Henriksen. Mm. Okay, you had enough at Goldblum. Not a Goldblum <laughs> fan. <laughs> wait, it's wait, wait. 95. How can you not be a Goldblum fan? What do you mean? How? Can, yeah, yeah, because I don't find him uh, funny, quirky, uh, Jurassic interesting. Park. What does that Jurassic have to Park do with one anything? And two. Thor that Ragnarok. Have... I hate fly. that's the worst part of Ragnarok. <laughs> I hate it of that part. This Every is the part. hottest take we've ever had on the show. Is it really? I fucking hate Jeff Goldblum. Wow. Why? He's like a, a national Jeff treasure. Gold. No, he's not. God he, damn I, it. He's like I think pretty renowned as like a sexy man. When Why? you gotta go, you gotta go. Like he has so many good lines in Jurassic Park. How can you Was not that like one him? of them? Independence Day. That's he a horrible Independence line. Day. Oh, Independence, he was in Independence Day. Day. Never seen How that you either. Not like, dude, Will Smith is in it. <laughs> this is I such a Will great Smith podcast. In, in, in certain uh, <laughs> in, in certain uh, waves of of the Smith. <laughs> oh man, this is Can not a movie podcast. Real quick, I have to tell this story. <laughs> okay, one time yeah. in high school. This one time. Uh, <laughs> fucking at lunch. This is why birds are evil too. Guy Nick Bruffy. Oh, more shout bird out to, drama. To Bru yes, Bruff Bruff. Uh, eating lunch one day, bird sh flies over, shits on his head. That shit rolls down his head, goes down his nose, and drips straight into the soda that he was drinking. Oh all in my one god! Fluid, and it was like you. I watched it in slow motion. Like, he was just like, what is happening? And, like, even, like, you're in such shock. Dude, he did nothing. He just, like, st stood there, sat there, <laughs> arms up, just, like, letting this... Because you're like, what's happening right now? This is ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Then he went and bought a lottery ticket and then won the lottery that night because he was so lucky. That's what I'm saying. It has to be lucky because it's so unlucky for... It's, it's the the chances of being struck by that tiny little pellet of, of, of white shit is so small and, and insignificant that, like, the ch it just it, it increases the chances of everything else good happening because that one mm. horrible thing... Because mm. it's like, I got shit on by a bird. There's no way I get shit on by a bird and hit by a car in the same day. Like, it can't happen. Unless the the shit is the reason why you got in the car crash. <laughs> oh, maybe, yeah. It's that big, maybe big it's load. because we can't speak bird. They actually have elite fighter squadrons of falcons that dive down and strategically shit bomb people. 
Well, it's not just random chance. It's actually planned strategic tactical <laughs> strikes. You would know. Well, that's why you gotta be scared of crows because crows remember faces. This is a real thing I read. What the I'm serious fuck? about this. What? I'm serious about this right now. It has been scientifically proven that crows remember faces and are proven to hold grudges and will even herd cr other crows. Crow e crow crows crows cr cr crows bro crows the crows. crows. <laughs> Just crows? Okay, I didn't know if there was a, a, a gangle of crows. But anyway, crow they will crew. group... <laughs> a murder. They're called a murder. <laughs> See, there you go again! Birds! But they will group them up and then go because they hold a grudge towards the thing that they remember things with. Crows. An elephant never forgets, but a crow never forgives. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever been... I've been shit on... I have been shit on by a bird. Uh, I was walking home, and I... It was I. It was like I prepared myself for it. I was walking home, like, and I went to crack my neck, and I, like pulled my <laughs> neck to the side. And right as I did that, a bird was like, Sack, and, like shit right on my fucking neck. And I was like, "What happened?" I mean, <laughs> but it was like I like opened it up for it. I was like, "Are you aiming here, good sir?" And I just like, Corey, you? I've ne I I have been in shit on a bird, but it was at like an aviary. Like where birds go to be caged and in, in jail. <laughs> where they go yeah, to like, be caged. Well, that's where yeah. you. <laughs> is that where I they was, also get uh, murdered? Hopefully, because I'd love to go to one of those. <laughs> no, it was, it was at Bush Gardens in Tampa. I'm gonna Florida, turn this to the real batting cages. They had like a big cage with birds and shit, and you could feed parrots, and the parrot shit on me. Oh god! So, oh, that's another like thing. Too much. My aunt used to have a parrot, and that thing was a fucking dick. I hate that parrot, sweet pea. I, Fuck I, sweet pea. I honestly didn't know that I was gonna uh, unturn this Oof. fucking like, <laughs> like bird stone that where like, oh, God. all these horrible memories are flying out Nick's, now. At Nick's you. usually a nice guy, but you start talking on birds, and he's like, "I hate I birds." Mm, like, mm, mm, like, I don't give I'm, a fuck. I'm honestly surprised this isn't your superhero origin story. Like <laughs> one of those, one of those incidents should have caused you to put on a fucking costume and be Birdman. <laughs> Except the only difference. Between me and Batman, Batman like rises in the caves and like faces his fear and lets the bats like fly around him and he like becomes one of them. <laughs> me, that ain't that fucking ain't happening. Just I ain't get getting near no. Nope, oh, nope, nope. The nope. They're flying all around you. Mm hmm. <laughs> fucking birds. I don't have a problem with birds. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, man, that's hilarious. Uh, Corey. So why don't yes. you explain your fucking self? What do you what what's what's your whole deal? <laughs> Tell the people. What, what's your problem, uh, bro? Well, I'm. What's your fucking problem? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, I am active duty military. Um, active yes, duty yes. Yeah, that work. was that uh, was the thing I didn't know that if I could like talk about because when you said that the, can. you know birds were were drones or whatever, I was like, oh yeah, you would know. And then I was like, oh maybe I'm not supposed to be supposed to be like hush hush about his assignment. Like, fuck. yeah. I work for the NSA developing bird drones. Uh, all birds are fake. Uh, birds don't exist. They're all government drones. I don't know if you've heard those people on YouTube, but uh, there, there but are videos right. of that. On QTube? Um, <laughs> there's, a, there's a literal guy that's like, birds are fake. It's all government conspiracy. They're all research drones. And I'm like, uh, okay, I, man. Um, I'm glad you've been following my YouTube pages. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty great. Uh, but no, I've been, I've been active duty for coming up on 11 years now. Right um, on. I'm a paralegal. Uh, oh. Which sounds very sexy. A pair of legal uh, what? Uh, <laughs> pair of legal Google searches. That's really all I do at work. <laughs> have, you, like, have you ever had somebody like say like, "What do you do?" And then like you have to think about it because like you're just like it's kind of like you're giving a briefing. And you're like, "That's a good question. I'll get back to you later. I'll get you an answer." <laughs> like, yes. Because like, uh, well, especially because well, right. I don't want to tell people that I'm a comic. Like, yeah, I hate telling people. Makes me feel I, sad. I hate it. I oh, hate telling people that's oh my, my hobby. god, you're a comedian. Oh, let tell me tell me a you joke. a joke. You can use it in your skits if you want to. But this one Whenever of your sketches. Somebody tells me I look familiar to them. I always say I do gay porn. Perfect. And they always <laughs> get freaked out by it. But no, um, maybe they should be more yeah. open-minded. I, I knew I knew you for somewhere, man. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, that's what I've been doing. I've, oh I've yeah, in, it was uh, you and Lance Hart, huh? Fuck. Two guys, one one. cup. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. But I. I've lived in North Carolina, I've lived in Japan, uh, nice, and now California, nice. um, and I started comedy about 10 years ago when I, before the military when I was in college at 19. I bombed and ate dicks on stage for three to four months. That seems Quit. like a bad way to try to do comedy, but yeah. a good way it's, to get uh, into gay porn. It didn't hit. It didn't hit, yeah. <laughs> uh, but... Uh, 
April of 2019, I, I went up at Seven Sisters, or formerly known as Seven Sisters, and then Dave Lohman introduced me to Libertine and Bang the Drum, and that's how I met you guys. Hmm. So, hmm. Well, since you are in the military, uh, what's tell me what conspiracy theories are real? <laughs> uh, conspiracy theories that are real. This is this is some secret intel, but yeah, give it up. Women's women's pants, the pocket size, are intentionally made small to bolster the purse market. Whoa! I figured it was going to be like that something like UFOs. <laughs> I didn't know you were going to be like... Nick's you're like, bullshit. <laughs> I've been studying a lot of Tom Ford, and I've discovered... <laughs> don't lay that on me, man. I don't fucking know. I don't have Damn a top it, that's secret. one of those where I I'm can... like, I'm on board with that one. I like that one. <laughs> that does, it is pretty innocuous as far as conspiracy theories go. Mm -hmm. I, I can tell you, like, what, I mean, fucking people that get arrested with child porn generally look like. <laughs> oh, like, God. <laughs> I'm not saying that everyone that has a mustache likes child porn, but <laughs> everyone that likes child porn has a mustache. Like, it's, it's like fucking a, a true. rectangles and squares situation. <laughs> like, oh, my it's, God. It is so... It's Stereotypes are whatever, but that one's on point. That one's yeah, based on right. truth. I you think know, I like, a group of people were allowed to stereotype. Like, that's very no fair. one's gonna get upset that we're <laughs> denigrating pedophiles. Yes. Hey, here, here from my point of view, man, you never hear our side of the story, do you? Do you? I have some great memories of getting like super high in college and watching uh, To Catch a Predator. That shit's entertaining. Oh, yeah. So what, what, well, I, I wasn't gonna, I wasn't trying to have sex with them. So why did you, let's see what's in the bag here. Why did you bring a six pack of Smirnoff ice and a pack of condoms? Uh, we're uh, just hanging out, man. We, we're gonna make water balloons with the Smirnoff ice. <laughs> like, uh, it's like, it, it works better than a regular one. And I always loved it whenever the, the host would, like, let them leave. It's like, you can go. Go ahead. And it's just the whole police force just waiting out there. And, like, they leave. And it's like, get on the ground, your bag. And then that's when those, they just, like. like <laughs> those real reality shows are were so good. Did you ever watch Cheaters? Oh, my God. Oh, They've been re-airing classic Cheaters on yes. uh, MTV in the mornings. And I Dude. got caught in on that. And I am all about it. God damn yes. Cheaters. The episode where that guy gets stabbed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The, the host? host literally yep. of the show got stabbed on an episode. They have to like cart him off. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I think it was on a show boat, in general, too. right? Like, oh, I mean, yeah, it's none of their business, but goddamn, that's entertaining. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's. There's something about. I'm surprised so many people signed the release. Like, <laughs> well, they did. They that's why they had to blur out right? all those like, faces. Like, it was so much blurry faces. Yeah, but for real, like some of those people are identifiable. Like who yeah. who else has a SpongeBob SpongeBob fucking stomach tattoo, other than my friend <laughs> Daryl? <laughs> like it's SpongeBob pissing on the Ford logo. Yeah, something like that. It's like only one guy has that. We know him. Uh, I would have loved to have seen a buddy on there. It's like, oh no way, man! <laughs> no, no, no! <laughs> <laughs> well, think about it. The guy that stabbed that guy, he had to have friends. Mm -hmm. So that guy's buddies saw him on there. And they're like, <laughs> oh shit, it's Kevin. Oh fuck, dude, Kevin's. No, Kevin, don't. No, oh, no, no, Kevin. No. Well, that's why. Well, that's how we got the name. Kevin stabs everybody McGee. Yeah, it was weird that he already had that name before he started stabbing that guy, too. Like, they should have known. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. man. What, are some, what are some shows that you want them to bring back? Uh, like Room Raiders. Room Raiders. Room Raiders. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Didn't we That's have a conversation about how we like, had a conversation room... about Room Raiders, and yes. I want that shit to come back because yes. Well, see, it would be it'd be watered down now, though. We can't. We I yeah. feel like some some you know just as it should be. Not saying. Yeah, <laughs> we gotta keep it as as pervy as possible, guys. What's all this Hitler material. <laughs> Well, all the guys, like, we ha we talked about this, but the guys would, in, every time they would come into the place, and they would, like, make a beeline for the dresser, and they'd <laughs> fucking open up the drawer, and just start grabbing handfuls of panties out. Like, and let's see then, what we're like, dealing with here. Yeah. Mm, granny panties, not my kind of girl. Oh, gross. <laughs> and next, I might as well leave. I don't even care about how many books she's got on her shelf. Yes. <laughs> as he moves past the masters from NYU and, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and Harvard. I just love and... how they bust out, like, a forensic kit, and they're like, oh, we need the briefcase for this. <laughs> Click. And then it's, got, it's got, like, a broken microscope and then just, like, water that they can spray on the bed and put a black light to it. Like, uh, oh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. in the new Room Raiders, the, the, the briefcase will just have a list 
of the person's passcodes so that way they can just go on their computer and start going through some stuff let's just get into it 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 was always social media raiders yeah go go into their dms see how many dick pics they got oh shit oh that's that's (laughs) cheaters meets room raiders for sure dude let's see what i'm competing with here Let's see. Wow, how many times has he DM'd Cardi B? My God, this is really, <laughs> man. I just heard that uh, Lizzo slid into Chris Evans' DMs, as she should, dude. That'd be. I mean, because that's America's you were Chris ass. Evans. I mean, <laughs> both of them have America's ass. <laughs> they both do. <laughs> and America's flu. <laughs> yeah. True. 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 Mm-hmm. Um. Corey, what, uh, what, uh, what, uh, can I ask a question? What, uh, what, uh, <laughs> yeah. what, uh, <laughs> like, okay. I've had this philosophy for a while is being a dad slash just any old parent. Is it basically just being like an older sibling after a while where you're just constantly kind of teasing your children whenever you kind of get a chance <sighs> and they're not crying and all that stuff. It, it's kind of like, cause you, you kind of, you have to teach them, you, you have to treat them as a peer but you just have way more information than they do. It's like introducing your girlfriend to like, I don't know, like Call of Duty or something like that. Like you mm. know how to play, but you want to be nice and you're kind of like feeding her information about ah, like slide canceling yes. and shit like that. But you want to tell them about life, but you also don't want to crush their dreams. Mm-hmm. So when they say, I want to be an astronaut, you don't want to be like, let me fucking reality, son. You're not going to be an astronaut. Like <laughs> fucking give school, up on kid. that dream now. Mm-hmm. Set to something achievable. Uh, you don't want to do that because you're a bad parent. Um, but lying to them is especially fun. Like Santa Claus, holy shit, it's fun. Like, mm-hmm. oh my god, this is the second pop- podcast Santa Claus has come up. But no, like, doing the whole <laughs> hey, Santa Claus thing guy. is so a lot much of people fun. Know him. It's so much fun. And then just uh, having the the parent excuses, like, why can't we do that? Because I said so. And then that, uh, that's the end of the argument. That's good. That is that's a good pa- power. Yeah, that is that is that's, with great power comes time. great responsibility. I can't say that. To, like if Rick was like, "Hey, you want to go to lunch?" No. Why? Because I said so. He'd be like, "No, but really, like why?" Like <laughs> also, I would never say that. I would never invite you to lunch. And you know that. <laughs> I offered him chicken wings to come over, and he's like, "Eh, you're an hour away." Like, <laughs> How many chicken wings? How many chicken wings are we talking? <laughs> I do like chicken. I could have chicken wings and strippers in my wings. house, and he'd be like, "Yeah, it's it's a long drive." Honestly, <laughs> I would I would drive for chicken wings more than I would drive for strippers. You, if you, if I, if you're like, I have chicken wings, and I was like, mm, I might, and you're like, and strippers, I'd be like, never mind. No, that means I have to talk to people. That means I have to like just <laughs> interact with people like, at all. Like, just it's so uncomfortable. Oh, you're a comic? Tell me a joke. Well, not even that, dude. I'm just <sighs> maybe maybe it's me, but I just am not a, a stripper person. Like yeah, you know, I. I'm pr- so I'm pro sex work. Like go out and do it. Um, but I <laughs> like I don't I don't get any enjoyment out of it. Like right. have you ever been? Once to you one? rev the engine, you want to drive. Yeah. Well, not even oh, that. Yeah, it just true. it just feels weird. Like it, you're just uh, so the last time I've only uh, uh, I got to be honest, I've only been to a strip club one time, okay. and it was literally like during the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> He's I like the spearmint you... <laughs> rhino isn't busy right now. There's ample parking. It, they're actually it's two a.m. on you Tuesday. Don't wear a mask. <laughs> yeah, I went out to Jesus. Vegas to do some shows. And, oh, okay, uh, okay. And yeah, like, they would I, be we open. There, met yeah. people, and they some. This woman owned a strip club, and so we went to the, her strip club, and it was just like the saddest thing in the world. Um, it there were like f- six guys all just in the perimeter of yeah. this large room with a stage <laughs> in the middle, and then like yeah. empty tables, kind of in between everybody. Hey, Walter. Exactly, and then it's just the music wasn't quite loud enough. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't like quite it dark did, enough, and it so didn't drown out depression. Yeah, exactly. You could really, you could just hear all like the squeaks of of her flesh on the the pole, like, <laughs> like every little click of the heels. <laughs> and you just like the uh, little rest, like when she lands, like, <clears throat> and you like heard it, like. Uh, like you're fucking working, like, you know, more power to you. <laughs> like, halfway through, you could just really hear, like, 
Yeah, exactly. You, she's just breathing hard. <laughs> I, I have two have, more Bud I Lights. Have, I have like, <laughs> good memories at a strip club, honestly. Like, before I went to Okinawa, Japan, uh, in 2013, we, uh, we had a going away from me in, in uh, Cocoa Beach, Florida, and all my friends from high school showed up, and we all got fucking hammered at this bar called Surfer's Pub that isn't around anymore. I wish it was. Best bar ever. There was a uh, fucking Billy Joel cover band playing called Hot Ooh. Pink. It was fucking awesome. <laughs> and we all got smashed until like 2 in the morning. And then the bar closed down. They are like, what else is open? We don't want to stop this party. And then we went to two different black strip clubs. And it was just me and a bunch of people, my whiteness or paler, going to hardcore like <laughs> black strip clubs at 2 in the morning on Cocoa Beach. And it, it was the most That's the real Cocoa time. Beach. Yeah, dude. Emphasis on the cocoa. It was so ridiculous. Like they they were they were basically like, "Do you want to kill somebody?" That's on the menu. Like it, it was <laughs> fucking like anything went. It's fucking Cocoa Beach. They're like, "Woo!" Like it was. It was Florida insane. seems like a different planet to me. It, mm -hmm. it is. They, COVID never existed in Florida. It's a exactly. myth. Like, like, like unicorns, Bigfoot, and wearing condoms. COVID is just some kind of myth. <laughs> so <laughs> I think people in Florida believe in Bigfoot more than they did COVID and condoms. Oh, uh, yes. They still. You know how when Trump lost and like everyone kind of like put their Trump flags for to half mast for a week and then they yeah. took them down. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I, they, they are still hanging up in Florida. I still like, see that shit everywhere. <laughs> no, they are hardcore about it in Florida. And also, like, Florida has, like, a big, like, employment crisis because so many people went on unemployment. And now that, like, the virus is getting under control, they're like, come back to work. And they're like, we're making more on unemployment. Like, uh, go fuck yourself. So, well, like, maybe the businesses, businesses have to money. close. They have to close at, like, 2 p.m., like a subway closing at 2 p.m. Hey, if you, can't, <laughs> if you can't pay your employees a livable wage, maybe don't be a fucking business. Yeah. But surprisingly, OnlyFans from Florida skyrocketed. You said surprisingly. Like, <laughs> that, that seems only like the least in surprising general, thing. I thought it was a place to meet friends, but apparently not. You thought you thought OnlyFans was like a new MySpace? Well, you you made one, so I followed you, and then you didn't put out any good content. No. <laughs> It was a lot of feet stuff. Yeah, it was all feet. Like, I just would pour ketchup on my feet, and I would, like, step on bugs <laughs> and <laughs> cakes. Oh, God. But, you know, I, I don't want to yuck anybody's comics, yum. Step on bugs. It's my thing. <laughs> hey, yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm not here to kink shame. Like, I wish I was sexually adventurous enough to have a kink that refined. Where it's like, That's the only way I can like, come yeah. is I need a comic from a Tascadero to step <laughs> on a water bug really slow. Like, like <laughs> I wish I was that, I knew myself that well. Oh, we don't have any water bugs. How about like, uh, we've got a locust. Fuck that. I need a water bug. We have <laughs> to import them happening. from India. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay, well, we got a comic from Templeton who can step on one. Is that going to be good for you? Fuck Templeton. Mm. The Tascadero <laughs> ride or die. Mm, fair, they have a fair. tasty freeze, and that's all I care about. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. We do have that. Yeah, I only know that because I drove past it. <laughs> what got you into the military, Corey? Uh, <laughs> so I was uh, I was in UCF. I originally majored as digital media. Then I went to uh, some kind of business shit. Then I went to chemistry. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. You said you majored in digital media. Yeah, I had to walk you through how to set up your computer to record this. As I said, I did major, and then I changed my major. <laughs> um, <laughs> then I went into business management, but then I went into chemistry. Um, junior year, uh, they were making changes to the program that I didn't really like, um, and they wouldn't a lot let us of my cook credits, meth in our dorms anymore. Pretty much, <laughs> I wanted to be Breaking Bad pre Breaking Breaking Bad, but. Um, they changed a bunch of the major shit and I didn't really like it. So I, I took a year off and worked at a gas station midnight shift. Oh shit. Awesome. Oh man. You saw some so great. shit. How many times did you get robbed? Okay. So Florida law, you have to have two people for the midnight shift okay. because of that. <laughs> but we had a Dunkin' Donuts in our Cumberland farms. Shout out Cumberland farms. Um, uh, and the cops had come Shout out there Cumberland the farms. To, uh, the best uh, gas station named after an old man's retirement home that has ever existed. Yeah. It's actually in, I think it's like a fucking small town in Connecticut or 
New Hampshire, one of those states that don't matter. Well, but, yep, that's what we do here. Uh, is we we step we we just uh, negate other people's jokes. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> for traveling, that's good. I'm glad that we at least have established that. And from here on out, I will be doing the same. <laughs> I'm sorry, you had a great joke about an old man. Thank um, you. <laughs> but no, I worked there for about a year and a half, and I was like, you know what? I really don't want to pay for college anymore. I'm going to serve my country and be a full time hero. And um, joined the air force and i didn't know what my job was going to be until i was like seventh week in basic training and they made me take a typing test and i could type well and they're mm -hmm. like you want to be a paralegal and i was like not really and they're like you're like you a paralegal a what <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> shout out <laughs> call back to your earlier joke that didn't work <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but uh no i was just like i don't want to be a cop i don't want to touch a plane so i was paralegal was a pretty sweet gig it's um, it's like being a nurse, but for an attorney. Ah. It's like you're an attorney's sidekick. Like doctors have nurses, attorneys have paralegals. Except okay. for I do way less, and I can't save lives. <laughs> yeah. So Fancy. it's um, I know a lot about state and federal law. So if one of you guys <laughs> well, fucking good. get arrested, that's, no, that's actually what I wanted. That's the next segment that we wanted to get into. <laughs> um, yeah. Is we're gonna we're gonna uh, shout out legal codes, and you're gonna tell us you're gonna tell us what they are. All right. Fuck, I have to Google that. No, nope, you're going to do it off the top of your head right here. All right, I want um, uh, per, uh, uh, Penal Code 7-A, <laughs> <Penal>. uh, <laughs> subsection Q17, paragraph 3. Paragraph 3, okay, that is uh, assault consummated by a battery while intoxicated, uh, and it could be done on federal land, but Did it's generally done on county. Did you say assault consummated by a battery? Yeah, it means it means you assault somebody, but you make physical contact, like you're beating them up. Oh. Just assault can be like me. I thought it was on just like a battery assault. assaulting somebody, Ooh. like a, a battery consummated in assault. Then what? Yeah. <laughs> then what? <laughs> <laughs> Say less. Then what did you do? <laughs> Um, all right, well, let's go ahead, and right now we'll take the first break, and when we come back, uh, we'll actually talk about some music, because uh, we got to find out what album you've brought. Um, so that's what we're going to do and when we return. Flock of Seagulls, I'm fucking out of here. <laughs> is it, Flock. Corey, is it Flock of Seagulls? F uh, it's not anymore. All right, well, good. I'm glad we got that <laughs> out of the way. We'll be right back on The Spin Doctors. We're back. Uh, it is time now to talk about some fucking... Tunage. Love it. Right, Woo. dudes? Did. Dude. Dude. Alright. Uh, Corey, as we do every yep. week, uh, we have asked you to bring an album to the show that has memories or emotions or, or some sort of connection to you that you feel a strong way about, that you have a, a strong opinion about, that you want to talk about the music behind. Um, what have you brought us this week? So I brought a band called Against Me. I brought their sophomore album, uh, As the Eternal Cowboy. And the reason why this album means so much to me is uh, this came out in 2003. I was a freshman in high school. And I don't know if you can tell, but I wasn't the coolest kid no, uh, I can in tell. high school. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> because you uh, sound just like me, man. <laughs> All the all of my like all the people that I wanted to hang out with kind of uh, uh, I guess like listen to this type of music and um, uh, there was a time in my life where I got introduced to this band later out of high school so I was still a loser throughout high school but I remember them <laughs> listening to this uh, freshman year of college uh, I got introduced to Against Me and it really uh, it basically ties in my entire hometown listens to this band and everyone knows um an album of this band everyone knows a track they all sing it at the local bars and for me every single song on this album kind of has a memory tied to it okay. as far as just reminding me from like a certain person from before the military or uh rem reminding me of a certain emotion i had in my hometown i i can remember like thousands of emotions for each track on this song that's or each track on this album sorry <laughs> yeah don't don't misspeak on this podcast dude yeah, I, that's one thing shit, man. that i can't fucking uh <laughs> uh 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 fucking yeah you shit. tell him man <laughs> yeah you tell him uh um, uh you you mentioned that uh <clears throat> like a big big band from the hometown is your is this band from your hometown so it's it's uh from they're from gainesville florida oh hell uh, yeah which is probably 
It's probably uh, three-ish hours from Titusville, Florida. Okay. Um, it's where UF, the Go Gators, are from. Uh, it's a shithole of the town. It's from uh, Tom Petty. It's, it's, where it's, Tom Petty's from. Don't you ever forget it. it. Don't you forget the Dude, Petty. Gainesville is a shithole. Gotta <laughs> but, love it. Um, it's, it's a swamp with a college. That's that's really Gainesville. Mm. Uh, but this band did come out of it. Uh, and interestingly enough, the lead singer uh, used to be it, 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 a did, male. Did Shrek go to that college? Shrek did go to that college. But the lead singer used to be a male. I don't know what the proper nomenclature, how you explain it, but she used to be a male or she used oh, she, to be yeah, a female. She transitioned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she transitioned. Her uh, Laura Jane Grace is mm-hmm. now her name. Right on. She's fucking awesome. And uh, one thing about me is I'm, I'm, I'm really attracted to passion. And you can hear the passion in her voice when she's singing these songs. Yeah. Like, nice. Uh, I mean, musically, maybe not the most intricate music lines and stuff like that mm-hmm. the lyrics are, are very well written but it's the passion that really comes through in the vocals nice. that's what i'm attracted to look in at band. you mr rolling stone magazine yeah, i like yeah. it <laughs> you're about to start talking about how our particles will be slowly separating from our other particles yeah right i'm gonna take off my hoodie real quick one second <laughs> oh whoa whoa oh shit hey 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 you have to have something on underneath that man i you know back to the stripper thing i've never been to a strip club and i'm glad that Corey's breaking my cherry right now because <laughs> that's pretty much what it's like yeah i drank too much too recently uh, and i'm fair. getting hot um so standard questions when is the first time you heard against me when's the first time uh late 2007 Late, okay, so this was was this the first album that you heard? Uh, yes, and I I remember it because I was uh, Ian Holmes uh, and I were driving to UCF from our um, hometown Titusville, which is about an hour drive, and it's because I was hanging out with this one girl who had a roommate that he was hanging out with. So for like two weeks straight, every day, we'd make the drive back and forth to the UCF campus to hang out with them in their dorm rooms, and we would listen to this band, and he's the one who introduced me to Against Me. Okay. Cool. So, yeah. Uh, uh, so, and uh, do, do, is and this, this is the, do you like all of their other stuff too? Like, is every oh, album pretty sure. much a banger? Um. I would, I, I like their earlier stuff a lot more. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, like first album up to New Wave. From New Wave on is kind of like when Laura Jane Grace uh, began her transition. Mm-hmm. And I just don't have those hometown memories that connect with the song yeah, because yeah. I was already mm-hmm. in the military. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it makes sense. So the yeah, that's first what makes this album so like... important. Exactly. Nice. Um... <laughs> have you ever seen them live? I have. I saw them live with mastodon oh uh these arms are snakes and cursive and these <laughs> arms are snakes <laughs> yeah they're fucking dog shit but uh oh, these arms are dog shit it's difficult to play a guitar are. like that but uh when when uh so there was a point in the show where we didn't know who the headliner was mm-hmm. so cursive got off stage and we're like all right against me is next and the whole crowd like the pit just like circled around the front of the stage and then mastodon came on who's very popular yeah. good band but w- as soon as the curtains opened and mastodon was on stage the floor cleared they're like ah fuck this we're oh, gonna wait really? till against me gets oh, yes. <laughs> like, damn like, dude but it's hands down the best show i've ever been to live right because on. the whole crowd the whole crowd sings along to sings along to all the songs yeah yeah uh, so uh and then uh the drummer did a stage dive and they were passing him around it's fucking awesome nice i love uh when when bands interact with the crowd like that like and mm-hmm. when the crowd is is so into it like, did, did they have like a lot of stage bantered like do they talk to to you and stuff when they're on stage yeah they take requests when they're on st- they don't have a set list they're just yeah. like what do you want to hear and then whoever screams the loudest that's the song they play Ooh, nice and that's then nice. uh unless they have an album coming up but uh the only other show that i've been to that was kind of like that was the darkness the uh the lead singer actually got on a random crowd member's shoulders and was like hey walk around and he just like <laughs> he did a guitar solo while giving high fives to people <laughs> so wow. like it was fucking awesome i saw this band uh, the called darkness. the california honey drops 
um, and they play this song where, like, during they're, they're all they're all you know playing instruments on stage, and then um, during the song they kind of like transition to other like smaller portable instruments, and then they would walk off stage and down into the crowd and walk through the crowd playing their little like a bongo, Ooh. and the guy would have a melodica, and the guy would have like an accordion, and the guy would have a guitar, and they'd just be like yelling the lyrics to the song as they just kind of walk through the crowd and everybody's clapping. Hell yeah. Um, just, I love mm-hmm. stuff like that. You can't do that when you get too big, though. Like, you, you're not going to see Mm-mm. Beyonce walking through the crowd. No, no. <laughs> yeah. She's going to get stabbed or something. Yeah, like, no, people are gonna just going to, like, steal her fucking hair, dude. Yeah. I mean, there is a point where you get too famous. You know all about that, Rick. I don't know anything about anything. I the most the most famous I am is I've gotten a discount at a barbecue place one time because a guy saw me at a comedy show. <laughs> you <laughs> are on my claim to fame. Check out Netflix. Rick stores on Netflix. So oh. <laughs> too much. Search him. Stop it. You'll he's have to been Google him to find out what he's an extra. Two seconds for the last <laughs> five months. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Except I've been promoting it too, honestly. I've been at work. Yeah. like, guys, have you seen Bad yeah. Trip? Okay, you know that part where like she flips him off and then like that guy? This That's was my crazy. friend. Yeah. I tell so many people, I know Rick. Well, who's Rick? Well, he's on Netflix. He's a comedian <laughs> on Netflix. It's not a special, but no. <laughs> like It's it's not even an ordinary. It's just a it's like a fucking it's just a doesn't a matter passing you can add fancy. Netflix to your comics credits, yeah. like your uh, your TV credentials. Yeah, I tell people that you're in it and that you're the gorilla. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'll say yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh my god! Um, is so is against me your favorite band? Um, they're they're up there. So it's 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 uh, music is is very subjective and no, I would no, like, I don't think anyone. <laughs> yeah, right? no, no, it's not. There's only no there are right and wrong <laughs> answers. <laughs> that's fucking uh, wrong. no. Uh, I, I listen to different types of music depending on my mood. This is the band when, since I'm in the military, I'm moving around a lot. If I ever get homesick or if I need mm-hmm. the, to be grounded for any reason, I listen to this band nice. to yeah. reminisce of the good old days when I was in my hometown, when all my friends were still there, uh, like when we were partying out by the lake and going to parks and smoking alcohol. And like, it's... Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I gotta say alcohol because uh, there might be FBI or military <laughs> listening to this podcast. Uh, but uh, you can yeah, say meth; it, they know this... you're from Florida. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, just meth. Uh, but uh, no, this is the band I listen to to really ground myself. And when, whenever I'm in a bad mood, I can just listen to a few tracks of, the, of this album or nice. one of their other, other albums and really pick up my mood. So uh, for me, yeah. it's very personal. I really like this band, and if I ever get the chance, I would definitely like. They they say don't meet your heroes, but I would definitely meet them. Mm, mm-hmm. Yeah, like, and it gives you a certain uh, comfort amount of comfort when you know that you have that band or bands, artists, whatever that you know you can always lean on whenever you need like a little pick me up or something. It's nice. It's 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 cozy. Yeah, yeah. For have sure. you ever met for- uh, like a band that you really looked up to before? Um. I've met a couple comics that I really look up to. Um, I mean, but... I don't uh, even know any comics. For for bands, I mean, um, not really. I mean, I've seen them at, like, meet and greets as far as, like, mm-hmm. signing shit. But I've been like, hey, you want to go to In-N-Out? Like, it's right, never right. been like that. Like, Well, not even, so, like, in passing. Like, uh, so... Uh, so I, met Dave, Grohl. What? Like, met, Dave Grohl? I met Dave Grohl. You met Dave Grohl? Yeah. Okay, yes. That's so, exactly what the fuck so, I'm saying. Oh, no. So, maybe like a meet and greet. I mean, yeah, I did meet Dave okay. Grohl. Fuck story you, time. Corey. What the? Story f- time. I was, yeah. at, I was at Ikea in Burbank or Hell wherever yes. the fuck Ikea <laughs> is yes. in LA. Hell yes. And uh, I'm sitting Turns there out eating my Dave meatballs. that's where Dave gets his drums. He builds them himself. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was, I was sitting there eating my meatballs, as one does, and uh, Dave Grohl walked by, and I, I, I talked to my wife, uh who's Japanese. And I'm like, Hey, that's Dave Grohl. And she's like, I don't fucking know who that is. And I was like, he's in, he's like a fucking millionaire. He's like, he was in Nirvana. That's a oh, shirt on, that stop, you're stop, wearing. Stop, stop. Well, how dare that's you his start off first with that. credit. I is hate that, that he's that a was millionaire. His first credit. My dear I don't, God. I'm trying to connect with somebody that's culturally different than me. <laughs> okay. All right. And money talks. Uh, baby. She's, she's money literally wearing languages. a Nirvana shirt. <laughs> <laughs> she's, She's wearing a Nirvana shirt. I'm like, he's the drummer for oh, the band that's on your shirt. And she's oh like, my god! She's like, she's like, I don't. She's like, I don't know who this band is. I got it at Urban Outfitters because it's trendy. And I was like, I know exactly oh, why. Oh, 
Ah, so I thought they said brand, not band. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so he walks back. Like I guess he's going to return some broken shit because it's IKEA, and he's walking back. And I, I'm like, I'm gonna go get a picture with him. So I'm, I go up to him. And I'm like, hey man, I don't want to blow up your spot. I, I'm a really big fan. I just want to have a picture. And he's like, yeah man, no problem. Takes a selfie with me. All right, that's not the end of the story. A couple weeks later, I get my first paid stand-up show. They need a headshot for the poster. I don't have any headshots. So I'm like, get the fuck out of this picture, Dave Grohl. And I crop him no! out. And I put, that was my first picture for my first show. You should have kept Dave Grohl in it and made, got people's hopes that it's going to be him. And then yeah, got more people into the show. In, man. That was the show you were on, Nick. I know. We need some more people there, Corey. <laughs> <laughs> well, next Grohl time I will leave Dave Grohl in there. That's awesome. That's I'm going to use that photo Dave for Grohl old future promos. <laughs> oh, Dave Grohl would kill. Oh, my God. Grohl would Dude. slaughter for, for hours. He kills anything he puts his mind to. He just did a fucking song about coronavirus with fucking what's Mick Jagger. Mm hmm. That's true. Was it Mick Jagger? One of the Rolling Stones. Yeah. Yeah. Which one? <laughs> the old one that does drugs. Does Keith Richards. No, that's Keith. Keith Richards. So it's he. Mick is the old one that dances, and you get yeah. scared for. Well, who's the one that sings? It that's, was that's, that one. That's Mick as well. Yeah. Then it was Mick Jagger and Dave Grohl. Dave Grohl played drums and lead guitar, and then Mick Jagger did whatever the fuck he did. But that's Ranced. awesome that your wife was wearing that that Nirvana shirt. God damn it! <laughs> oh, so I didn't amazing. want to bring it up. Like I almost brought it up. Like <laughs> hey. it would have been even better if like Dave like kind of like saw it and was like like having a good day that day, and he's like, you know what, I'm gonna. Gonna make a fan's day. He's like, "Hey, nice shirt." And then she was like, "Cool, thanks." Like, yeah. he's like, how much do you, you, you think want he me hates to... that though? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, how much do you realistically do you think he gets asked about it now, today, in 2021? Wait, asked about, about like, Nirvana? Nirvana. I like, mean, probably I mean, often. They Foo still Fighters play. Is pretty big. Him and uh, Chris Novoselic yeah. and uh, Pat. Pat, whatever his fucking face is, smear. Um, they all, they all, they all play as Nirvana still. Do you think Courtney Love killed Kurt Cobain? Now that we're on this emotionally, Nirvana yes, topic. yeah, emotionally, but not like hired a hitman no. type documentary. No, I'm not in type. on that one. No, no you gotta tell the military that one's not real. That, like, no. <laughs> is that one of the ones that's real, bud? <laughs> you gotta tell yeah. me if it's real. It's entrapment if you it, know. There's a whole documentary about <laughs> it. You a cop? You gotta tell hey, me if you're, you're a, a cop. cop. Man. <laughs> Are you, you're supposed to tell me if you're a cop. Is paralegal Greek for cop? Uh, <laughs> this Dave Grohl paralegal is Greek for Google shit. <laughs> this like, Dave Grohl story paralegal kind of... more like para Google searches. Oh my god! Stop with yeah. the fucking paralegal. Uh, <laughs> the the Nirvana shirt and not understanding who the the band association thing is. It reminds me a couple years ago I saw this story online that. Uh, uh, David Lee Roth was staying uh, like at like Caesar's Palace in one of the suites, mm -hmm. and you could hear at the next door that there's like uh, like a bachelor party going on, and they're just blaring Van Halen, Van Halen, <laughs> and so he, Van Halen, <laughs> the <laughs> Alien Van the, Halen the, cover the, band. Oh God, I love it! My God, uh, <laughs> Eddie Eddie was an alien on the guitar. Let's be honest, uh, we don't we did not deserve him. But so he's like, oh, let's get the cameras going. Film me. I'm going to make some some fans day right now. And so like <laughs> cameras following him, like knocks on the door. The guy answers and David goes, hey, can you guys uh, keep it down in here? And the guy's like, oh, sorry, <laughs> sir. And he's like, what are you guys up to? And like kind of like and he like goes inside the room. And he's like, it's like playing some good tunes huh? And they're like, yeah. And he's like, <laughs> yeah, he's just kind of like standing there he's like. You know who I am, and they're like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> they're like, right. um, and then like one guy goes, oh, you're the dude. And they're the, they're like, oh, oh yeah, you're 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 yeah, 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 yep yep. And then finally he's like, yep, it's me, David Lee Roth from the band Van Halen. And they're like, oh hell yeah, man, <laughs> we love you guys. <laughs> he, he he actually lives in Tokyo now and uh, practices uh samurai sword fighting probably because of what happened at the caesar's is. palace that night yeah he's he's been banished that, that <laughs> now like he's banished him <laughs> now he's training he's to kill bill from the, the twilight party. realm <laughs> <laughs> they, that happened and he fucking evaporated into a fine mist and just floated out on the eastern wind and was only able to co coalesce back into himself in the in the islands of japan you know he can't d dissolve because all that David Lee Roth does is jump. <laughs> the two are not mutually exclusive. It is it is funny because you have to refer to him as David Lee Roth. 
Oh like, no, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, he doesn't. He doesn't get a David. He's not Roth. No. He's not any of that. He is David Lee Roth. Yeah, which is a nice. It's nice when you get a D full Roth, name use all the time. D Roth. Yeah. D Roth. No, he doesn't play basketball. But it's that like level of fame where your name doesn't even seem like a name anymore. Like, it's like a Brad Pitt. Mm, mm. <laughs> like everyone. No, also, his no cover one... of California Girls is dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Wow! I didn't know Brad Shots Pitt did fires. a cover of California Girls. <laughs> God damn <you. laughs> yeah he's dressed in a tuxedo next to the beach you should check out the video <laughs> wow well there's there's well, that was way different well, than i remember brad pitt is a title but brad pitt in fight club is also like a <laughs> fitness title like you want to attain that body yeah like yeah, every trainer probably oh, hates brad that pitt's movie. career fizzled out after fight club then he would have started his own workout video called fight club <laughs> yeah <laughs> dude the oh amount of money God. it takes to get that body is like I mean, not like I would do it if I had Oof. the money, but it must be nice to be able to have a movie production scene that hires trainers for you to get that type of body. Yeah, the diet part I couldn't do to get the muscles. I've come what, to terms you can't with that. Eat that much? I'm not. Just eat a lot of food and work out like a beast, and then just have zero life outside of gym and eating. I think. Yeah, that's... dude, that's it. That's all you got to do. But when I eat, I want to nap. Man. I mean, I wish you could just t like they're probably inventing robot bodies that are ripped right now. Come on, Elon Musk, and I can just cut my head off and put it on a robot body that's ripped, has like a 19 pack. That's what I want. <laughs> what if they did invent robot bodies, but they but you had to occupy them like Krang from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Like you had to be <laughs> in the stomach part of it, like they would just stick your brain into it. And you still be down. I don't see a bad side. Big dumb like I don't see a bad side. Lumbering thing walking around that you had to be like piloting. I love it. I love it. And I also visualize that everyone's brain just looks like their face, but on a brain. Yeah. Yes. Like my brain has has these like glasses. Like, yeah, exactly. Futurama. Got, and they all have brains have like little brain tendril arm things. The, the little, able... Yeah, the little tentacle things, yeah. which always kind of gross me out. <laughs> yeah. I want my brain in a like jar, how... like in Futurama. <laughs> it, yeah, exactly. Ah. But they all they always have like a prehensile, like even the stem can like come forward and <laughs> it's like gross can it go in and out oh, wait do i still have a dick or is that what i'm fucking with is the little tendril like i'm just that's a very important question i mean they say you know 80 that's, that's of every man's brain. brain's first like... question when they get formed as a brain it's like so how do i fuck yeah, how big's the dick on this robot body can we upgrade is it like a trim on a car where like you have to pay an extra thousand Worth it. Can I not let, take it on the freeway for the first hundred miles? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it loses value as soon as you take it off. The yeah. <laughs> this dick has a hundred thousand miles on it. We're not oh gonna... god! And then the used robot Damn, bodies. Forget much. about it. <laughs> um. So, Corey, be, uh, before we get into the album, do you is there anything else you want to say about about it before uh, we start getting into the songs? Uh, like... There's a lot of the songs that uh, the way Wait, they make. Your... You've have you you've. You've only seen them one time? Yeah, so I've, I've seen them one time. I saw them at uh, the House of Blues in Orlando, Ooh. Florida, outside of uh -oh. uh, Universal Studios. Uh -oh. uh, it's also where I saw Mitch Hedberg. Um, oh. But... Uh, what, what year was that that you saw? Not Mitch, but them. Jeez. Uh, uh, probably like months after I first started listening to them. Oh, nice. Yeah. Dude, so... that's, wow, that's, that's so oh, God. awesome. That is yeah. such a, yeah. I, I know oh, exactly like how that is. A little bit of being is. spoiled with that one. Which, yes. Yeah. Because like oh. every tour has an Orlando date. There's no tour that doesn't go through Orlando, <laughs> Tampa, or That's West Palm true. Beach. So That's why like, they call it Tour Orlando. Yeah, exactly. So I, I'm 45 minutes from Orlando. So any band that I wanted to see, good joke, Rick. I want to acknowledge your joke. Otherwise, you're gonna get upset and crying. But uh, <laughs> no, the fans are just gonna get mad. We're gonna the message board is gonna be lit up. Like nobody acknowledged that fire joke that Rick had. I can't believe they just let that one fly by. Yeah, the Rick Store 8chan boards are going to freak out. <laughs> but uh, but no, I, I saw them immediately after I started listening to them. I actually, uh, for a brief time, I joined a cover band that wanted to cover their songs. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Uh, yeah. Uh, with, what do you play? I play drums. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm like the okay. only drummer in my hometown. So like Ian Holmes, the guy that introduced me to this band, was just like, hey, me, Liam, and Roland want to start a fucking Against Me cover band. Come over. And Wait, we really just like, did you <laughs> Is, Florida Fred's is a Ian and Liam? Ian, Liam, and Roland? Did yeah. you? Uh, were did you, you in fucking One Direction? 
Did you live in Glasgow, Florida? <laughs> what the fuck? It's, yeah. It's funny because Liam's last name is Malone. Luna so it's like Titusville. <laughs> so Liam <laughs> Liam Malone. So it's like Liam Malone. He's just from Florida. Like Liam but, Malone. Yeah. I, I don't know how well they're gonna like <laughs> like their names being shut out, but they're uh, fine. And Liam then, Malone. Uh, gonna listen to this shit. Yeah, Roland Roberts and Ian Holmes, yeah. Roland uh, Roberts. Story. So, Roland Roberts. so Roland Roberts. That sounds like a, a fucking like a, a, a the name of a private dick in a in a twenties <laughs> movie. So <laughs> Roland Roberts, uh, he is he actually holds a special place in my heart because he was wearing an Against Me shirt one time. It was a album cover from a different album, not this album, but their next one. And I saw him at a house party at Liam's house, and I said, "Hey, man, I love Against Me. That's a great shirt." He fucking took the shirt off and gave it to me. He's like, "It's yours now." He's like, "I'm Whoa. happy that you listen to this music." And since then, wow. he's been a fan of my comedy. Like he he sends me like compliments on like jokes I put on uh, like like social media and like like wow. when I have Facebook and stuff. So. Yeah, it was, um... It is nice to... It is, like, nice. Like, it's it's not that often in life that you know exactly um, who's going to kill you. Um, <laughs> and then when you find that out and you just have that closure, like, you don't have to worry about how you're going to die. Oh, okay. One day I just won't wake up and I'll, like, you know, I'll know... That it was because Roberts. I was suffocated in my sleep by <laughs> Ian Holmes. Yep, and then because 25 years fucking... after Corey's death, will someone will listen to this podcast and then you start the <laughs> Ian Holmes is a fucking Sasquatch, though. He's Your like 6'7". Dude, he, he's 6'7", white fucking beard. He looks like Sasquatch. He could put on a costume and just be like, yep, that's Bigfoot. I didn't know Sasquatch was white. I mean, it is in Florida because they're very racist. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> That's the last straw for me when we whitewash Bigfoot. I'm out. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that what a Yeti is? Uh, that's a Japanese Bigfoot. Sorry. Um, okay, it's actually called the, the Skunk Abominable Ape. Snowman. It's called the Skunk Ape in, in the South. No, that's, that's a Tanuki. That's a Japanese word. I know. That's what Mario turns into. Dookie, Let's take a break. <laughs> <laughs> um, and when we come back, we will get into the album, uh, <laughs> track by track, as we always do, when we return on Spin Doctors. Woo! And we're back. All right. It is time at long last Let's to get, get into get get this Let's week's album. Ow, 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 uh, we've ow. got Against Me as the Eternal Cowboy. Now, I uh, am a fan of a few... It's, it, can you be a fan of a few songs? You can. That's acceptable. Yeah. Is that a... Yeah? Yeah. Okay, well we then I'm a, a fan songs. of a few yeah. songs. I'm a fan of a few songs, but they are not on this uh, album. Um, they are... The songs that I like are on a completely different album. Uh, they are on... Uh, fuck. New Wave? Uh, New Wave. New Wave. That's the yep. album that I'm familiar with. Um, I think that was the album that really like broke them through. That people were, you know, that was the more famous album. Yep, that's um, true. Yeah, so that's that's where I for, first found out about them. So this is going to be cool to go through and see uh, their earlier stuff. Am I going to be able Let's to hear this? It. Yeah, yep. if you just watch okay. the... Yeah, uh, if you just fucking listen one goddamn time, Corey. If you yeah. just <laughs> sit down, Jesus shut up, and listen. Jesus. Yes, sir. Not that hard. Um, then what? All right, so uh, let's get into it. The first song of this album, uh, what do you got for me, Corey? What, so, is this, what does this song mean to you? This is the album. So TSR stands for This Shit Rules. And oh, uh, which nice. is, yeah, it's a pretty good title. Uh, but this is the song that normally would play at the end of the night when everyone's drunk as shit and is struggling to find a cab in this no name <laughs> town of, of Florida. And uh, this is really the song that somebody would put on to signify the house party or the, you know, the bar is closing. This is the ah. jam that would come on and everyone would sing. Okay, this is a Florida right. closing time. Yeah, yes, exactly. <laughs> you don't have to go home, but this shit rules. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. Interesting album, album opener. Yeah, yeah, to open with a song about the party being over. This is totally different than the song than the stuff that I've heard. Ah. Oh, okay, there we go. <laughs> oh yeah. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, this is more what I was imagining when I uh, thought about this. This is, it's like, yeah, this punky... Okay. This isn't what I was expecting. I felt like Against Me was like more kind of like metal. I've never listened. Oh, I'm a sucker for that guitar effect. Yeah, that, any pick slides like that. Yeah. Um, I also just like that that yelling, like Corey was saying, dude, that passion in the vocals, that passion in the fucking music, just yelling through. Uh, it reminds me of this band called uh, He Is Legend a little bit. Oh, I'm surprised. Uh, he I'm surprised is Legend you didn't is a little bit more fish. hardcore. No. <laughs> <laughs> this got that Americana vibe on it too. Uh, yeah. Uh, to our first episode. Well, it kind of came out. Americana came out in '99. This come, came out in uh, 2003. Okay. Um. So it. Uh, cool. Cool. You know, a couple yeah. years later, but you know, still the same kind of um, 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 style a little bit. Okay. I yeah, get that. I had to mute my mic because I can't help myself from singing along to that song because it's just <laughs> so. It's like I, I was saying this to Rick. Nick, Nick might not have been here, but I'm something I look for in in this band. Something that means a lot to me is that it's not necessarily the guitar riffs or the drums or the lyrics themselves. It's the passion beside behind the lead singer's voice, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that's what really draws me to this brand. Is that um, this band like I. They're notorious for throwing house parties, like to go to Gainesville and just like show up at some random house that's having a party and be like, hey, we can play here. There's multiple videos on YouTube of like them playing house parties and shit. And they are like for like they are punk rock, ride or die, bout it, bout it. Like and you can just kind of it kind of gets communicated through Laura Jane Grace's uh, voice in the in the song. So, yeah. That's, I mean, I, I've sang that song so many times, fucking drunk at 3 a.m. at Irish Pub in Titusville, Florida. Like, <laughs> so that's, that's, yeah, that's, it, that's it, one it of my top like songs song of all time. song that you can just, like, yell along to. Yeah. yeah. Uh, most Definitely. of their songs are yell along songs. Um, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, that, that was, that's a great opener. It's funny because it does start, like, oh, you know, the party's over and everything, but then it, it ends up being this, dun, like, dun, 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 dun. yeah. Uh, that was dope. Um, all right, track two. Um, this is a pretty. I like this title. The funny thing about this album is there's like it's mostly very very short songs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like the there's one song that's four minutes and forty six seconds, and there's one song that's two minutes and fifty four seconds. But besides that, everything is like short. Um, and this next song, this is only two minutes and nine seconds. And you know, it's that's. That's short. Um, That's short, right, Corey, man. Anything about this one? So the uh, the thing that really gets me on this track is uh, I, I I generally listen to this track when I'm kind of lost and uh, the core and and that's because the chorus says a new way on. And it repeats it over and over. It's like, a new way. Uh, and it kind of like gets me thinking about life. Whether or not that's what the song is about, no fucking idea. But <laughs> it's got a very uh, cheeky title, Cliche Guevara. And it's yeah. um, it, it's it's a good track. Let's listen to it. <laughs> um, are you one of the people, like, do you really listen to the lyrical content of a song? Or is it just, like, about the vibe of it? Yeah. Uh, Sometimes, uh, sometimes their lyrics will really get me thinking. There is a track in this album, like later in the album, that I'll really connect with. Um, mm-hmm. But generally, it's like how the music gets me pumped up. It's it's not like I'm one of those assholes at the gym that are like, I only listen to R and B for the beat, so I can work out. I'm not one of those guys. But yeah. uh, definitely, like, uh, yeah, I'm I'm so familiar with those guys <laughs> like, when I'm at the gym all the time. Yeah, you know, you know, you're power, <laughs> you're power yeah, lifter. You're like the mountain. Yeah, but. Yeah. Uh, and when I'm I'm there, I'm trying to power lift. I'm trying to like listen to my uh, Death Leopard and scream. Yeah, uh, don't you go? <laughs> don't you go to the gym as Rick the Molehill Storer? Like, but no, I go as I go uh, to the gym as Dwayne the Rick Johnson. Oh, that's good. Damn, that's good. I wish I thought of it. <laughs> Try to pay me the big bucks, Sonny. <laughs> but uh, this song. Oh yeah. Yeah, play the song. Play the song. It's great. Uh, this is Cliche Guevara. There's your pick slide. Mm. They're going through a lot of picks in this show, man. <laughs> this is great. This is this is yeah. This is I can see what you mean when it just it it moves you forward, picks you up. 
Yeah, this is chill. Oh, cool. Yeah. A lot of chanting going on at these shows, I feel. Yeah. It does It does feel very anthemic. Like, mm -hmm. the, these are songs... I mean, it... it, it is somebody striving to like say something and like to do something mm -hmm. and it almost it, it seems like it makes sense that she ended up transitioning later in life because like she seems like she was just trying to do something this entire time yeah so there there is one line that's like i guess socially connecting for me and it's uh well there's a lot of things that should be said said so we're hammering six screens um machine guns and audible voices this is the party we came for and it, it's kind of like a political i guess protest in a way where it's like mm -hmm. uh turn gunshots and mortar blasts into a metaphor of how we are all the same and um like those kind of types of lyrics like you can't really hear it because of like the the quickness of of the the singing but it, yeah, it's, yeah. it kind of puts it into a jam of like hey we're trying to be political and, and kind of send a message with our music type here yeah I think that kind of goes and, with the title too, of like exactly, Che Guevara yeah, was, che Guevara. yeah, Che Guevara was fucking parented on every hot topic shirt from 2000 to <laughs> 2021. <laughs> so <laughs> I think that's what they kind of tried to connect with at the time. Yeah, you can't, you're not going to be able to write a song and that uh, the title references Che Guevara and have it not be political. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for real. Um, all right, uh, how about this next one? I hate to not have every like a sentimental memory with every jam on no, this album. No, you don't have to. No, they could be... what, what, what sucks is that, like, so what I don't like about this band is that their great songs that connect personally with me are spread up across like four different albums. So like mm -hmm. coming on this podcast, you're like, no, this is Germany. We need <laughs> one album and you need to pick it. Mm -hmm. And that's all we're listening to. So like mm -hmm. I had to pick mm -hmm. this album because there's specifically one song that I highly connect with, but, uh, some of these songs are just great jams to drive drive to. Like this is the album that I I, I listen to on every drive to Pier Front to do stand up, because I sing along to it to get all those verbal non fluencies out of my voice before I go on stage. Mm, mm, mm. That makes sense. Yeah, we talk a lot on this show about uh, driving music. Yeah, it's very everything... cliche Guevara. Yeah, <laughs> it's our own cliche Guevara. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so is this just like one of those songs that you just you know you just put on, don't really connect with, but it's just a good jam? Yeah, good jam, solid good jam. jam. This is Mutiny on the Electronic Bay. Mutiny on the Electronic Bay. I love the a song that that starts with a good count in. Yeah. Oh, this is and good. this is in 2003, so this was just they thought that's what eBay was actually called. <laughs> I like the, uh, the, the, uh, um, it's not, it's almost like a ska aesthetic where it's like, dun, 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 yeah, dun, dun. it's very like jumpy. Yeah. And the guitars yes. are very, um, like distorted and, and like, yeah. Yeah. The way they keep kind of switching, uh, strumming patterns and mm -hmm. stuff is, is very cool. Giving those little flashes. Mm hmm. Out, and when you listen out. to it in stereo, it's definitely one of those things where, like, there's a guitar pattern on one side and then another one on the other mm -hmm. side. Unfortunately, that's stereo is one of the things that this podcast cannot provide. We don't do that, man. Mono nope. only. Yep. Mono, uh, mono only. That's only. A, that was a great jam. Uh, I don't. I didn't hear any of the lyrics for it, but I think it's that's. <laughs> this is one of those bands <laughs> like that you don't really need to hear the lyrics for. Yeah. Like you said, it's just, just all about yeah. the passion. Bah, 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 uh, there, bah, there's, bah. there is one uh, one lyric in there that you might not have heard, but that class division doesn't make an inventory. There is no incentive, no franchise opportunities. And it's kind of like referencing mm. the military industrial complex. Mm -hmm. that. So, and how do you feel about that? I feel, uh, you know, I feel great about the military. They're great <laughs> people. I love the military. <laughs> <laughs> they give me lots trying to of give me money fired, to like <laughs> to type things. <laughs> but this uh, next song, this is why I picked this album. Okay, this is the one. This is the one. This is this is in my life out of all of the music I've ever heard in my entire life. This is literally top 2 
for songs for me personally. I have so Ooh, many wow. I have so many memories tied to this one song. Like this song was screamed at the top of our lungs when I turned 21 and we we're celebrating at the Irish pub. This song was played when I fell in love for the first time and we were driving to Crystal's at four in the morning drunk to get burgers. This song was played. And that didn't when, ruin it for you now that like, no, that's <laughs> like this. This song was played on my first heartbreak when I needed a pick me up when I um, when I was down and mm. out. This song is the song that I listened to when my I found out my dad had cancer and I was I was mm. down and out and I just needed that hope to hold on to. Like this is a song that I connect with on every level, every emotion and and when I hear it, I think of so many people from my hometown. And it's just, for me, it's near and dear to my heart, as it is with a lot of other fans. Uh, but this is the song that really gets me. Like, this is this is the song for me. And it only makes it more perfect that it's saying sink Florida sink because I fucking hate Florida and I hope it sinks into the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> Beautifully said, my man. <laughs> well, let's all chant it together on the count of three. One, two, three. Sink, sink Florida, Florida sink. sink. Perfect. Not one more word mm. This is not, I did not expect this at all. This is, I feel like this is one of the, the tracks that you actually can listen to the lyrics, uh, you know, yep. and get something um, deep. I really like that uh, um, reverb and echo effect that's on yeah. that uh, guitar. It's almost, Just it almost has like the, the Leslie Speaker effect. Ah. Uh. Man, vocals are in it right now. I love it. Yeah. Ooh, that's cool. That, that little, the the note holding that note, but he keeps throwing those oh 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 ohs. Yeah, yeah. And I like the um, the because there's there's the the smoothness when the the actual like singing happens, and it is so smooth, and they like sing like it's so. It's, you know, nice singing, and mm -hmm. then it's contrasted by, like, that, like, rough, scratchy um, uh, passion that comes in. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, Good it's song. A, like, the uh, the later chorus, uh, it, it, it kind of paints a picture of two people in love, and, yeah. and they know that the relationship isn't going to go anywhere. Uh, but uh, the the last the last actual line before the whoa, oh, 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 oh's is... Uh, uh, they make all the right reasons to fuck it up. You're gonna fuck it up, and it it really drives the song home. It, it's kind of like a, hey, we're in love. We know we're in love, and this is my last moment to tell you how I feel before yeah. we're never gonna see each other again. And for me, it's it's almost like a, a hello and a goodbye for really close friends of mine because like it starts out with like an not aloha, one, if you will. Yeah, it's it starts out with like a what, not one more <laughs> word tonight. Anyone from Titusville, if we're at the Irish pub, can start this song, and it's kind of like the Fresh Prince. Like you just have to finish the rest of the song. Like, and it, like, or anytime somebody goes, it's been yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, but Not uh, it. but no, it's a uh, it's definitely like this is like tried and true. This is my favorite, like one of my favorite songs of all time. And uh, when they sing, they they close on this song live. Because yeah. it's so popular, ooh, like, this is a this is a song that you can sing live, and the whole crowd sings it. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when 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 there's like a, a group of 400 people chanting the song, it's really powerful. So yeah, that, absolutely. That's that's exactly why I, I chose this album was because of that song and the closing song. But <laughs> we'll get to that it's, in a it's, minute. It's it's cool that like the song that that really speaks to you is the first song that's unlike all the other songs like everything yeah. is very punky and like upbeat and then this is the one that really you know it's almost it's not a ballad you know but it's almost a ballad yep you'll you'll see that uh they they do change it up they have punky 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 acoustic punky 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 acoustic <laughs> like so oh. uh is so it goes back to punky for this next one uh, that is correct punky oh. brewster baby all right, this is uh, <laughs> slurring the rhythms. Oh, perfect, yeah. Uh-oh. 
I can see this song starting a show. Ooh, I'm, I can get on board with that. Oh, this is so good. It just reminds me of, it's like pirate punk. <laughs> pirate punk, yeah. It just reminds me of like a pirate shit. Totally. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think they got really cut good. out of the Pirates of the Caribbean 5. There's a scene where, like, they're fighting <laughs> the big uh, bad guy and, and you got against me playing this song. All yeah. dressed as pirates, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is so good. I, I, this is, like, so uh, less produced than the, mm. the uh, new wave album that I'm familiar with. Which has a much like bigger sound. This sounds much more like raw and and um, like I don't know, not as produced. It was 2003, man. It, it, it was back in the good old days, back when they were <laughs> still still performing on on old Macintosh computers. And I'm talking about the ones like the desktops with the different colors. Ooh, turquoise. Johnny Carson Ooh, was just getting on uh, the Ed Sullivan show. <laughs> I so yeah, I think these are like uh, self-produced or like minor label produced albums. This is was their second album when they were like first starting out and still playing those house parties. Yeah. But what one one line in the song that really can, I, I guess like connects with me and, and might connect with you is they say direction is a point direction is a purpose destination is a reason to live out this heartbeat and they said that right before the whoa oh, 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 oh's uh but it's it <laughs> these are I, these are types, I like <laughs> <laughs> these are these are the types of songs that you can just like fucking windows down cruising on the 101 crank it up and just scream it at the top of your lungs type of music and then you don't now have, have a to question. pay for therapy um does it have to be the 101 fuck i you know it could be nine i-95 like in my case mm. that mm -hmm. that piece of shit highway that's been in construction for like nine years <laughs> like, <laughs> i fucking hate i-95 <laughs> Or I, I think four. I don't think highways are ever finished. Highways are just a continuing system <laughs> of employing people to remake it. Dude, the one hundred and one, like it's like the one hundred and one is great because if you give up, you're just you can wow. just like veer to the right and go into the ocean. Like, it's pretty great. Yeah, yeah, like, it is good. Like, it is good to know that there's an option. Like, there's it, always a way out. It's like right here, nothing. <laughs> right here, national news. Like, <laughs> and if you're looking for a way out, uh, we are just about to take the last break of the show. Uh, so this is your turn to take your way out to take a break and and do whatever you need to do before we finish up the uh, last few songs in this album and um, talk about. Uh, that's pretty much it. See you soon on Spin Doctors with my buddy Corey Jernigan. And we're back. Whoa. That's the first time that a guest has brought us back from break, but I'm going to, I will allow Actually, it. it is you know? not. I think <laughs> Look, Liv did. Did Liv do it? Liv did it. I think, I think Ella did it too. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh man. All right. Well, I guess you're joining we need a, get, uh, a, we need a steam get club. Get the rain, get the reins, <laughs> Rick. Get them in your hand. Grip All right. Them. Yeah. Okay. Give me, give me this. Corey, Corey, give these reins. Give them over to him. Here you go. Get there you go. There you go. Get them in your hand, Rick. Okay. Now grip fast. Oh, they're all sweaty now. What the fuck? Why Sorry. is there applesauce on here? I like to jerk off on the fly. That's not applesauce, uh, but... baby. But it hey, sure Rick, tastes let like it. Let me ask it. you a question. What's your favorite food? Um, Tacos. You know what I like? Rice and bread. Mm, that's really is that good. bread covered in the poison ricin? It's the name of the next song. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> really? I wasn't even looking. That was a great Jesus segue. Jesus Christ! Oh, I, I mean, uh, play. <laughs> Corey, give the. I told you to give the reins back to Rick. Now give him back. He took him without <laughs> him even knowing it. He was too busy looking up applesauce. I was thinking about tacos. Taco. Maybe I could get a pizza taco. Oh fuck yes! This is. I am about this shit. I feel like a lot of fights in Florida have gone down to this song being played in the bar. It's it was weird because I thought that it was gonna like really break into a hardcore mm -hmm. thing and it just like stopped and like went into just this like bare bones little ethereal part. That's fun. This is some good. Yeah. This is great. 
this is the type of shit, like, this is what I liked on the Americana album as well, was that just, like, fast drums, mm -hmm. just bop do bop do bop do bop It's contagious. That's a cool, that's a cool mm -hmm. little line right there. I can play every record front and back. Uh, every line means as much to me as it does to you. I don't know what he said, but it was good. A lot, a lot more chains, too. A lot of wop, wop, wop. Wop, and wop, it changes wop, up wop. A lot That's too. what they're saying. Wop. Wop, 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 wop. That's great. Um, you know what, Corey? Guess what? Uh oh. Uh, that's getting Boom. added to the playlist. Yeah, so you can definitely hear the passion in, in Laura Drain Grace's voice in that song just because, like. That, yeah, that, that's, like, awesome. You're going to sing everything you're thinking. You're going to sing it, like, uh, sing it until they're listening. Like, when he sings, like, sing it like you mean it. Like, when mm -hmm. he, like, screams that, you can definitely hear it. Just, like, he puts everything into that, or she puts yeah. everything into that. And it's, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's, uh, like, man, this is, so, every song just is so anthemic. Like, there's not, there isn't a song that is just, that doesn't, like, isn't, isn't saying something. It's almost like, um, the band, uh, 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 uh Rise Against, but, like, I'm not a huge Rise Against fan. Like I just I'm not I'm not a big fan of their sound, um, but this is like the 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 um, message sending of them with like the punk a better punk sound. Yeah, for sure, and and it, it and it's funny that you kind of say that about lyrics because their next song is instrumental. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's I like basically, a good instrumental. It, this is this is the song that they come on to stage to, at least in my experience, or they play when they need to get like a, I, I guess like a water or other legal drug break. <laughs> so yeah, it's not often that you get a punk band doing an instrumental thing too. Unless oh, you're fish. We got my niece. I think that might be my niece's uh, cameo on the on this episode. This is perfect music to play as your niece comes into the room, too. Oh, I know, too. <laughs> She's like, I'm here! <laughs> At least there's no, uh, like, bad words, right? Mm. Interestingly enough, this is one of the uh, first Against Me songs I learned on drums. Because it's Ooh, fairly easy. A good one. Yeah, I was going to say, it sounds really easy. I roll. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it, it, I mean, as I, I, I used to play drums as well, and it, it doesn't seem, you know, it seems like it's pretty much one pattern just moved around the drums. Ooh, that's a, that was good. Ooh. Yeah, this is cool music to, like, like opening up the show and then let the singer come out. She comes out, woo, you know, get, give yourself that little extra intro. Yeah. You know, I could see this during this. This would be during like a road trip montage in a movie. Ooh, like there's yeah. somebody like driving across the country, and it's like just all guys. these shots yep. of like different places, uh -huh. and then like swimming in a river, doing comedy, and fucking like climbing a mountain or whatever, jumping and off this is playing cliff in their underwear. Yep, yep, yep. Holding hands as they're as they drive off a cliff. Yeah, exactly. Being chased by the police. mm Hmm getting abducted by aliens and flown to a distant galaxy far, far away. And it was all a dream the whole time, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Do, 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 do. Rick, if we make a movie, we're going to use that song in it. Oh, I'm down. you have Every, to ask <laughs> like, that's That kind of song is the reason why you write a whole movie for that one <laughs> exactly. scene. Where it's like, oh, you, this is the part. That's what James Cameron thought. Song. When James Cameron heard Celine Dion's I Will Go On, he's like, I have to write Titanic based on this song. <laughs> like, just like the Caddyshack was written after they heard I'm alright <laughs> <laughs> that's good and how Ghostbusters was written after they heard the song Ghostbusters yep <laughs> <laughs> what about the all female cast Ghostbusters what song inspired that WAP <laughs> <laughs> you beat me, you beat me, son of a bitch. You God dick. Damn it. You fucking dick. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, there's, I, I can't. Fucking... I can either confirm or deny, to be honest, because it honestly, it's all just unsubstantiated rumors. Fucking. Oh, good one. Love it. 
What's, oh, what's, nice. What do you love about this song, Corey? Oh, this is sexy. I wouldn't mind if a, if a person pulled out an acoustic guitar at the party and started jamming this one out. It's like, oh shit. Yeah, right? I have I have one one line in this song that connects to open mics. What is it? <laughs> you'll, you'll hear it and you'll know. <laughs> oh, now you're going to have to make me pay attention. It's coming up in a second. There's a reason to stay. That can't be it. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> that's it. Okay, that's it. That's it. One hundred percent. That's it. This is this song is about comedy. Mm -hmm. Every push forward, you get the same fucking pushback. It's uh, Newton's rule of threes. <laughs> you had nothing to say, so you that, start lying. Okay, you know what? That might be the best joke I've ever made. <laughs> <laughs> Good name for a comedy special, honestly. It, you know, it's not bad. Dips. But that, that would have to be like a one-liner comic. You know, yeah. they they actually have a line further in the song that says, "Like, what the fuck were you thinking? I'm not sorry. I do it all again." And every time, I. I hurt like a girlfriend's feelings, but it's for justified reason. Mm -hmm. uh, I listen to the song. And I'm like, yeah, I, I fucking scream that lyric and I feel better. Yeah. Like specifically a girlfriend that I had in, in my early years of college. Uh, she did a lot of bad, bad things and it was okay. Not mm. to laugh. She like Rob and, Banks. <laughs> ah, she just, uh, she collected the infinity stones and snapped her fingers and decimated <laughs> half of the population of the universe. I would I would love to go into it, but I try to I try to treat every past relationship with like I try to think of them of what they meant to me when they were at their best, so that I don't have that any is grudges. Such, oh, like it's to a, get like, literally nice. to get like real for a second, that is such a fucking healthy thing. Yeah, it's very like, healthy. It, there's not very a mature. bigger red flag than when somebody is like, "Yeah, all my exes are fucking crazy. Those people are fucking nuts. Yeah, They're you're all, fucking like, insane if you people. think that way. Like exactly. Yeah, and what's like, the common then denominator? What, what does that say with about you too? that that like? If, you know, if that's true or, you know, how can you put all the responsibility on them being so crazy? Exactly. How, like, at some point anything. you loved them and there was a reason why you loved them. And, yeah, I, and I people, try to think and of all my exes like that. People are that crazy. You know, people get, I mean, it's, generally it's mostly men talking about their ex-girlfriends. They're like, oh, that bitch was so crazy. Yeah, um, like like my ex. Sh sure, she lit churches on fire, but she made really good fucking <laughs> beef bulgogi. See, that's crazy. Like, and that's what my I try ex to remember. Was crazy. She got mad whenever like, I texted my ex girlfriend. I know, but, crazy. And every time she'd get mad at me like that, I always say, "Hey, you look like you need a drink." You look like I need a drink. <laughs> <laughs> but, now there's another dad joke. Well, that's that's the title of the song. That's the name you of the song. Like you I need a drink. Oh, did I mess it up? <laughs> <laughs> this song could be played drunk. I think that's why it's called this. You just look at the drink I needed. Like <laughs> the cool thing about this band is they all they like at the same time sound like a festival band and a bar band mm. like i i i used to I play that. in a basically a bar band that was like so much fun and this a lot of this stuff sounds kind of like stuff that we would play not necessarily i mean kind of in the genre but also just in the the uh, the part, vibe yeah. of it or the 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 I don't know maybe it's because the production quality is is not like super professional or whatever mm -hmm. but it just feels so like a real band you know like I don't know and they still got that raw feel I feel because of the still the newness you know from the still the second album you know you're you've you've gotten the yeah. the groundwork down a little bit but you're still still new still a little dirty and I like it yeah 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 so. There, there's By your a, sophomore album, you haven't like exhausted your initial list of songs. I think we've talked about this before. Yeah. But like, when you have the the first band by or the first band, the first album by a band is usually like their one of their best albums because it's the songs that like they've been playing for the longest time, 
and you know they they really have like built this repertoire of like these songs and then by the sophomore album they've kind of used most of those songs and then by the third one they're like all right well we got to write new songs and that's mm-hmm. the one where it kind of like falls off so this still has those like initial against me songs that were written probably in the early days a lot of them 100 percent. like they, they definitely knocked it out of the park with their first album they had uh pints of guinness makes you stronger which is one of the nice the, the hits on there uh but specifically about this song is uh there's one of the lyrics that says he said this is probably the worst decision i've ever made she laughed and smiled and she said i'm pretty sure you do this all the time right and that <laughs> that vibe like we've always that reminds me of like a front bottoms lyric <laughs> doesn't it like yeah. like 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 when you're making a bad decision with somebody else and you you know it's a bad decision mm-hmm. like i'm going to do this extra fat line of alcohol or like <laughs> and, and then she's like you've probably done this a million times with a million different other people like that line really connects with me and that's that's kind of like what i really connect with in the song and we're getting we're getting to like one of my favorite songs of all times i think it's like yeah. number 2 or 3 this is it this next one or is it the, the closer the closer the closer going on, on all top right. Well, there's, there, I mean, the only way to to properly introduce the closer is to do the next song first, right? So That's let's true. do that. <laughs> <laughs> this is the this is the feature song. <laughs> yeah, this Comedy is the penultimate. Terms. I think this is one of their longest songs on any album, actually. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like, everything else actually, is less than three minutes. It's four four minutes and forty six seconds, I think. Yeah. Um, and do you have, is this one of the ones that is just like a good jam or it's a good have you jam seen this to song live? I, I have, I've seen every one of these songs live. Oh, cool, uh, cool. I, I think they played this, this entire album plus additional songs when I saw them live. Nice. Plus bonus tracks. So, love it. It's pretty great. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, this is, I, this is a chant that, that like, I've never heard a more clear call to action that is like, Hey, look, you are you're our fans now do something about it uh this is turn those clapping hands into angry bald fists Ooh, and that's not like hairless fists <laughs> it's like like w- with a ball someone just starts getting the hot wax out it's like all right time to get <laughs> those hairs off oh this is legit too Ooh. sleep on pillows made in singapore <laughs> All right, this is Corey. Oh damn! Ten seconds in and end to a playlist. We're getting you got two on my on my playlist. I'm happy because this is two, this is exactly what I like. That that hi hat just like holding it down in the background, like Hold it it's down, a quick hi hat in a slow song. Yeah. Mm. Oh, the bass just sounds like molasses, you know? It's just kind of flowing through it. Yes. Mm. 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 Go fucking insane. Oh, man, yes. Oh, those those little, like, runs. Beer, beer, beer. Ooh. Oh, my God, this is so good. <laughs> Damn, I, th- this could almost be mistaken for like a Queens of the Stone Age song or something. Yeah, if it was a little bit like heavier. Yeah. God. <laughs> Damn, dude. It, he actually goes into like self-deprecation yeah. as far as in the lyrics go. Like later in the song, he's like, I hate these songs. I hate these words. I hate the singer that's singing to me. I hate this melody. I hate Ooh, this stupid meta. fucking drum beat, but I'm not going to tell anybody. Damn. And like... Uh, it, it, it progresses in passion. It kind of builds up to where yeah, he's just like that's, screaming that's, that's at the end. That's such a like introspective, like a, a look inward to her because like if she, uh, she probably did fucking hate herself at that point. Ooh. Like she probably hated, didn't feel like who she was and everything. Mm-hmm. And so it's just like, man, that's fucking powerful. Yeah. And he's like, there's so many there's so many songs that you kind of get tidbits of that prior to the transition mm-hmm. of like this is a caged animal that needs to be let free. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And yes. and like there's there's so many like hints that that she was dropping in these songs that's just yeah. like wow like 
like hindsight is twenty twenty, but like you listen right. to these songs now and you're like, wow, like she was really dealing with some real shit yeah. like back then. Like, because mm. as comics, we we know that we tell the same jokes over and over every show. Like we'll we'll refine joke, not so much Rick, but me and Nick, and um, <laughs> but, but uh, we tell the same jokes and we kind of kind of try to hone our craft, and uh, and, and and sometimes. You're having a bad day, and you don't want to get up on stage and be fucking Janice for two minutes. You don't want to go up on stage and say parallelogram for the thousandth time or telling, like, you know, the shitting your pants joke. Like, you don't want to do that. But, like, this kind of captures that in a song. That's what it does for me, at least. Yeah, no, I I get that. No, totally. It's real. But what do we do? We go on stage and we fucking kill because that's what we do. That's our jarb. <laughs> that's but... my jarb. Um, all right, dude. We've we've reached it. Is do you this. so? This, this is... is in your like top. Wh- okay. Okay. Top how many songs is this? This in? is top three. Against me has two of the top three songs in my entire life that I've ever listened to. Okay, then what's the and, other one? Yeah. I mean, probably Flock of Seagulls, honestly. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> uh, it's a uh, there. There is a Buddy Rich song called uh, "Channel One Sweet" that holds a near and dear spot in my heart. But it's nice. jazz and it's instrumental. Yeah, why do you? Ha- why does it have to be like a cool song? Why couldn't it be like Aqua Barbie Girl or something like that? Like, <laughs> I was really uh, hopeful that I was going to be able to roast you for that. But no, yeah, but like, that's a very close jam to mine. Uh, I can't it's, fuck it with gives Buddy me goosebumps Rich. when I listen to it. Mm. But uh, this song in particular, this is the best happy breakup song that you'll ever hear in your entire life. And it's ba- to give you the story behind it, it's a, uh, hey, you cheated on me. I cheated on you. I'm going to go be a fucking artist right now. You're going to have to deal with it. Let's both be happy and love each other because obviously we don't love each other. And whatever you thought was love, whatever you I thought was love was not actually love. And that's the message it clearly communicates in the song. Oof. But I, I, I think of this like I have a social fantasy that whenever I have a huge breakup, I'm going to go to like Guitar Center and pay some <laughs> fucking drug addict to teach me guitar to learn how to play this song so I could sing it live at a stand up show for the girlfriend. And that's how she'll figure out that I'm breaking up with her. But um, oh, you're a it, fucking monster. <laughs> Damn. But, I, but, I, I but, uh, just ask her to meet yeah, me know, for right? coffee. But yeah, yeah, do but you, buddy. I, I, I like to do things in excess. But yeah, this song. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I've sang this with so many heartbroken male friends of mine that they're just like, I can't believe she left me. And then we turn on the song and everything's all good. And it really, yeah. it just, it smooths things over. And whenever I'm having a bad news, re- bad news relationship wise, this is the song I, I turn to, to really make me feel better. Wow. So, well, not to, I mean, not to oversell it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I can't, there's nothing I can say. I love it. Beyond, I support I mean, it. Let's get it. <laughs> This is Cavalier Eternal. <laughs> There's your count off, Nick. Yes, I love this. Oh. This reminds me of, like, uh, Modest Mouse. Um, good times are killing me. Just coming right out and saying it. This is the happiest breakup song I've ever yeah, heard. Yeah, really, man. Yeah, I get the little note like like lear- <laughs> pay a drug addict to teach you the guitar, but like I get like the idea of like hearing this song and be like, you know what? I want to learn guitar just so I can play this song. Because... I mean, th- this is a very easy song. Yeah. Which is why it's a great I- inspiration. Be like, I can do this. Corey, I'll teach you to play this song. Because <laughs> he is a drug addict, so you win yeah. win. <laughs> you, you qualify. I do. You did not undersell it. That is the yeah, happiest breakup awesome, song ever. Man. Yeah, like the, two two lines in this song that really connect with me uh-huh. is like he's like gonna make it to the moon tonight on a one way kamikaze flight. If I could get so high, I'll leave behind my problems, take them out with the empty bottles. Like everyone's I have been never in that fucking move. More. 
Like, yeah. and, and then later on in the second chorus, he'll, he'll say, me and this guitar are going swing and blind into the unknown. Uh, you know, a song and a stage is all I ever needed of a home. And wow. I feel like that with comedy. Like, yeah. like, if you're not down with comedy, you can't be with me, mm. you know? Like, because, yeah. like, that's all I need is a mic and a stage to really be happy and be fulfilled. Well, it's I feel like, like you guys feel the connection yeah, with that, dude, too. Yeah, dude, as an artist, mm-hmm. like... It's, I don't. I hate calling myself an artist, but like, as like a as an entertainer, as a comedian, like as you know that that is that is part of it. You know, is is that person is going to be traveling? You know, that person is going to be um, st- out on some weekends and shit. You know, doing doing mics and stuff. You know, you're gonna have to like. It's it's one of those things that like it's tough to be with us. <laughs> That's yeah, why a lot I've, of us are so alone and unhappy. <laughs> I, I, like speaking of being alone and unhappy, like he goes on further in the song, and he, it's almost like he realizes, like, hey, this girl I'm with, it's not going to work out. And he's like, someday I'll call you from a payphone from a truck stop on the road, and you'll tell me how much better off you've been on your own. And Jesus, like, dude. like it just this it connects like, on so many levels. If, like the older I get, the more it connects God. with me. Yeah, like this is if my if my if my fucking heart could write a song, that would be this. Yeah, but it's 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 so, such an easy of a song, but the melody just ties. Like the more I live, the more I connect with this song and sink floor to sink. Like these two yeah. songs mm. on this album just like sink into my life, and they're never going away. Like yeah. I, I, I made a like I have a shared uh, playlist with a a very very close person in my life and like I these are the two songs that I put on immediately I was like these right, are, these right. are the songs that definitely are like we need to share mm. so well I mean uh, that was <laughs> honestly like. St- I, this this show never ceases to amaze me. Honestly, like I, I I'm not patting myself on the back, but every fucking episode that we do, I find something incredible. Like even this against me, yeah. dude. I I knew that new wave album not that great. I used to have the whole album back back when like you would download a whole fucking album from an artist. Um, and I used to have that album, and I would listen to. You know, that, there's a song on there called "Stop" that was a big radio hit. The new wave yep. song was a radio hit. Um, yep. And but they, I I was expecting all that from this album, and this was like so much better. This is this is a better <laughs> album. Mm. Yeah, they they also have an album, uh, Miami, that you should check out. Yeah, that's also kind of in this feel. Um, and it's, it's very like the punk Rocky, like rise against the government type of feel. Uh, it's, they're just fucking, they're hometown heroes. Like anyone in Florida, if you don't know who this band is, you should definitely listen to them because I I don't know what you're doing with your life. If you haven't heard of them. Yeah. All right. You hear that all these Florida, I don't know how many listeners we have in Florida. (laughs) If you're in Florida, fucking talk to us or in the netherlands if you're in the Netherlands, Netherlands, listen to this. Oh yeah. Shout out to the Netherlands. Keep listening. We love you. We, we love, love the, the Netherlands. Netherlands on this podcast. Mm-hmm. 82 mm-hmm. in the Netherlands. Let's make it 81, fellas. Let's do like, it. <laughs> <laughs> Tell your uh, Dutch We'd friends. We'd love to come visit. We'll do a special live show for Look, our, Rowan, our Netherlands Winkle fans. Wagon, we speak the language here. <laughs> Guten okay? tag, bitches. Let's go. Giddy up. That's woof. Uh, that was this work. week's album. Uh, what do you think, Nick? What did you think about it? I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I was going to. Yeah. I heard the oh, band thanks, name Dick. and I was not really <laughs> well, I'm gonna be honest. Sorry. Yeah, dude, yeah. Uh heard the band name, I was like, okay, here we go. Let's put a nice face on. Uh but no, this was good music. This was not what I was expecting at all. Um solid stuff, man. Yeah, that last song, uh and the song before that too, those I gotta finish that song. The the, the yeah. crazy long title one, because that, that left me uh, uh, juicing for some more. I don't know. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Man, good job, Corey. You you did oh, a good. That you last did song good. is going to go into my kid. blah playlist for sure too. <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> everybody has to have one of those playlists that you put on when you're sad. Yeah, literally titled yeah, it's, blah. It, mm-hmm. It's a pick me up song. It it makes you feel. It's like that and wagon wheel. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like you love me some actually, fucking wagon wheel. God damn. They it. actually so. So, uh, Laura Jane Grace does a, a cover of Wagon Wheel that's on YouTube. It's not on iTunes or 
Spotify or anything because of DMCA or whatever. Yeah. But if you look it up on YouTube, it she does a fantastic cover of it. Nice. Um, uh, she also has um, because of the shame is also another uh, uh, feel good song about uh, a friend that has passed away and you need to feel better about it. Yeah. Uh, I've had a lot of friends commit suicide or die from drugs, and that song in particular has really brought me like i listen to it like on my way to a funeral and i feel like i can keep my shit together to, so yeah. i can talk to parents or family or stuff like that so yeah i love that uh, podcast on a high note yeah. um yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cory you got anything you want to plug buddy plug in uh please go out to pier Front wine and brew in avila beach california thursday nights at 8 p.m uh, they have a fantastic open mic run by Liv Doty and Ernie Romero. And then please go see Rick Storer on his <laughs> Is This What a World Tour Looks Like Tour because he is a treat, okay? The first time I saw him, like I pie. thought he was a methed out dude that carried around a sawed-off shotgun and a backpack full of meth, but he was pleasantly surprising. Because um, he was that person fucking... and he did all that and <laughs> comedy. Also did... But no, it Please go see Rick. Please go see Nick Malizia whenever you can. These two guys are, are literally my comedy here. I look up to them as my older brothers in comedy. Aww. And I, I can't stress this enough. Thank you guys so much for having me on the podcast. I really appreciate it. Uh, you guys are Fuck fucking yeah. awesome. He's making the jerk, jerk off signal. <laughs> but but uh, you guys are fucking awesome. You guys are, are inspiration comedy-wise and, and just fucking chill dude-wise. Like, oh, thanks, buddy. Uh, there's, there's no funner time than when I'm around you guys. Oh, it's, thanks, we man. always have a blast. <laughs> like, you're, you're a good guy, a good human, a good soul. And a good soul. Uh, I salute you to your service, my man. Hey, yeah. Thanks for my paycheck. Yeah. Thanks for uh, <laughs> thanks for sending emails that I guess keep us safe. <laughs> yeah. Crisis averted. Come to the potluck. Bring sides. You get on uh, the airplane first. Are you that kind of military? No. Fuck no. Okay, I, if I pick up I'd a rifle, pissed. start learning Chinese because we lost. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, that's what kind of military I am. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, all right. Well, uh, I mean, thank you for listening. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Spin Doctors. We always have a blast. We always want you to come back and keep listening. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, anything you want to say to us, we're on Twitter and, and Instagram at Spin Doc Pod. Uh, if you want to send us an email, we're at uh, we're at spin doc. There's, there's just like six ats in in emails, right? I don't know how <laughs> these things work anymore. Uh, spin Doctors Pod at gmail dot com. Uh, and then go ahead, do us a big favor, leave us uh, a review on iTunes or, uh, you know, rate us on whatever you can rate people on. Be honest, um, too. We just got a, a new uh, review from, I think my buddy Alex left us a review. I'll give ah. a shout out to Alex. Thanks, dude. Uh, we got a five-star review from Love him. It. He says he likes right the show, on. looks forward to it, likes the commentary, likes the music. Our guests are interesting. And, I, you know, I couldn't agree more. We're great. Shout out, Alex. Um, ooh, ooh. Whoop, whoop. Woo. Uh, and also a big thank you to Pale Blue Dot for our theme for you off of the album Kingdom Phylum Class Order Family Genus Species. Great album. Go get it. It's great. Um, and that's all I have to say. I mean, I'll be on tour. I don't know if I'll be on tour when this episode comes out, but, uh, you know, come see me. Um, <laughs> that's it. Uh, this has been another episode of Spin Doctors. I hope you love us. Please love us. I've been your host, Rick Storer. I've been your host, Nick Storer. And we... And I've been your guest, Nick Storer. <laughs> and I'm... <laughs> going insane. <laughs> 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 you know you enjoyed your medicine. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>